Today we're talking about conventions in the vein of board game conventions, what to expect, how they differ from other conventions, and kind of the categories. Yeah. One of the things that I kind of wanted to focus on with this is each convention is slightly unique and slightly yes. different. And so it's really hard, like one of the things that we did early on is- In the before times. In the before times. And we're gonna talk about that too. What, because we have conventions coming up because obviously like you can't stop it from happening forever. We have to go back to conventions to like sell games. We're looking at going to Kickstarter next year and we need to build up people who want to kickstart our game. So the best way of getting those people on your list is going and letting them demo your game, but you have to go to conventions to do that. It's called networking. It is. It, networking and also just like demoing and playthroughs. Yeah. And so one of the things that I wanted to give us is a space where we could tell people which conventions we've gone to and kind of what they're like so you kind of know what to expect because you almost have to attend a convention once to just know to just like. know what it's like and to know whether it's something you want to go to again is a thing a or, question that we posit a lot of the time there there's even like hidden things at conventions that you don't know about <laughs> Things and, are things are constantly changing and then all the time. You'll just be like, I keep seeing how people manage to get signed up for these playtest rooms and I want to know how to it and it's almost like you have to go to the convention to learn the rules of the convention. To ask people who are to, at the convention. To know how to do the thing you need to do and you want it to do at the convention. And by the way, it is now too late to sign up for any of the rooms. So you're going to have to just do it next year yeah. because it turns out that that particular convention does all their signups via some sort of special forum that you had to be a part of before the convention because nowhere on their website did it say anything yeah. about forums. So here's the, the, dirty, yeah. the dirty secret about conventions, at least in the before times. Things may be a little bit different now. Well, we don't know. We, the problem now is everything's been put off since the 2019-2020 season. So now everyone is kind of clamoring to catch back up to where they were. But beforehand and probably next year and going forward, um, the problem is conventions plan out at least four months ahead of time, if not earlier. I believe we were doing all of our planning for 2020's convention six months ahead of time. Yeah. And so if you aren't getting your spot then for being able to be in an unpub room or uh, those kinds of demo spots, you're probably too late by the time you think about it a month or two ahead of time. Yeah. It's, you're definitely too late by the time you get to the con oh, and you yeah. start and ask people like, how am I spoke? How was I supposed to do this? So what I really wanted to make was a safe space where we can just kind of say what we've learned and what we know and what we're really secretly hoping is everyone else will also. And then later we'll hear about this great convention and we'll be like, oh, I've always wanted to go to this convention that- But it's really far away. So and I, so I didn't really know go. if we share, you know, do we wait, do we spend the money to go to this one convention that's across the country? And it turns out that it's, the greatest because everyone just sits in the rooms and socializes and network for well then yes definitely it's worth the money to fly to go and meet these people these people or, or play or, these specific games because those designers are only in it, tennessee or yes something. it turns out they only go to this one con and it's so anyways we just kind of wanted to talk have this chance to talk about what we've found what we've learned and what we're really hoping is to create a space that everyone else will do it too and then we'll hear about these great cons that we're not currently going to because we live uh very remote <laughs> yeah oregon <laughs> if you didn't know we live in oregon and <laughs> oregon is kind of this weird spot because seattle has a ton of game designers and lower california has a ton of things like san diego and just like the la san diego area has a ton of like geek culture in general 
And Oregon is kind of this weird spot where we don't have enough people to warrant enough attention for things. And PDX, Port the Portland area does have stuff, but we're not in Portland. So if we want to contribute to that or see those people, we have to drive, in Carrie's case, an hour, in my case, an hour and a half to get close enough to, to do things with people. And if they do it on a Wednesday, we work normal hours. So it's just, so, it's rough. So to put it in perspective for you, um, if you're on the East Coast and people are like, hey, you live in Washington, D.C. And they're like, there's this great con in Atlanta, Georgia. Understand the amount of time it would take you <laughs> to get from Washington, D.C. to Atlanta, Georgia. That's how much time it would take us to get to L.A. I, I'm going to make one little like asterisk statement. Sure. Caveat. A little caveat. Understand that we may live in Oregon, but we've been to big cons. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's we've fair. gotten on planes. We have flown across the country. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll go through what we thought about some of the different conventions. I just wanted. I just wanted later. to make sure that it didn't sound like those hicks in Oregon have never been to a con. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. We've then, we've been places. we've been places. Right. We know how to fly a plane. <laughs> we know how to fly a plane. <laughs> fly in a plane. So anyway. Um, we'll move on to the next section, but understand for us, we, we're we trying to create a way of people to find out about cool conventions that fit their vibe that may not be near them. Because for us, we don't have a ton of conventions and we don't necessarily want to spend a ton of money to go to ones only to find out that they have like too intense of an environment or just oh, could you imagine focus oh. on something that we aren't necessarily interested in and one of the other things is is that conventions are we're gonna say poor they just don't have a lot of money i mean especially local conventions especially local conventions yeah. especially uh gaming conventions it's like everyone's heard of certain conventions and the rest of them it's all crickets and so consequently this also would give us a chance to spotlight maybe conventions yeah. that can't advertise themselves do, and so do people some free may... marketing for some good causes absolutely yeah we'll start by talking about how a board game convention differs from a general convention you might have been to a convention before like wizard world san diego comic-con anything with comic-con in the name generally is very broad and has a lot of varying interests to try and get as many people in as possible. They'll have voice actors from shows or actors from shows and movies. They'll have comic books and comic artists. They'll have big named things that are coming out in theaters or on streaming services, toys of different franchises, 10,000 Funko Pops. They'll just try and hit as many things as possible to get as many people interested as possible in through the doors. Mostly because they're just trying to get counts of money. Yeah. Count, counts, of, counts of people. Well, and by spreading it out, that means that you, the toy collector, will go to this one section, whereas someone who is interested in a photo op and an autograph will go to this section. And there's a little bit of something for everyone. So a group of people could go in and split up and do whatever it is you want to do and not have to feel obligated and, to spend time doing this and, one specific and thing. And frankly, I never see half the con because, <laughs> you know, it'll turn out you go to the second floor and you never leave the second floor and it'll, you'll, you'll have never seen the whole rest of the con yeah. because you were just You're on doing some, this one. Thing you were on the were one floor in. the whole time. And yep. I don't know that this is true for all conventions, but I've noticed in my personal opinion, there's kind of two things to do at a general convention, a general comic con, you can either shop for things, and that is art, that is vendors, toys, merch, clothing, soaps, tea, whatever. And number two is doing things, which is going to your panels, going to your autographs, going and sitting in a room to listen to people talk about a thing you're interested in. And that's kind of the major things. Other ones can have other specific things, but that's kind of where you're spending most of your time 
I always think of it as three things. So it's like you can um, get autographs and meet celebrities. Sure. You can listen to people talk. Sure, like the panels. Like the panels, because the reality is there's two kinds of panels. There's the celebrities, but there's also, you know, just... This Niche is how marketing this is how you group. make soap. This sure. is this is I mean there's there's panels for everything. <laughs> it really is. And then the third option is of course all the halls and halls sure. and halls of boy I really want to buy that. Right. So that's that's sort of your lot. You're yeah. you're going to either listen to people talk about things, you're going to meet important people or you're going to buy stuff. In a board game convention there is normally merch. It is normally a lot less in the sense that in a merch hall at San Diego Comic-Con, you'll go into your big vendor hall. There will be 250, 500 people selling X, Y, and Z. You'll see a lot of duplicates of things. You'll see a lot of people selling the same kinds of merch over and over again, even if it's a, a variation. In a gaming convention, most of the time you'll see a company selling their own games. So if you True. see the, the Renegade booth, they'll be selling Renegade games. If you go over to the Rio Grande booth, they'll be selling Rio Grande games. You'll go to each specific publisher or company to buy their game as opposed to here's this toy shop that's selling all of the board games that they have in stock. So in that sense, it's a lot more specialized. If there's a company that you really like, you can go over to their booth, see which games you already know that you like, and maybe see what else they have in that same vein. And you also get a chance to see games that you know nothing about. As in, like, you're, walk you're just walking down the hall and what is this? And hey, they're handing out pins. There's also this difference between small versus large cons. Too. Yes. The large big cons, cons will have the free cons swag. Big cons is where you're getting all your free swag. The little cons is more where you're going to get the little independence and the... Um, the things that are cheaper or free for them to promote themselves. Yes. And that's also where you're going to find a lot of times a lot of little independent artists. Yeah. Is you're going to find that kind of, all your little independents, they can't afford to go to the big con. Those, well, they, the, so, the, yeah. those booths are too expensive. Exactly. <laughs> and that's, that's a really good point. If you're someone who is like us and you're still un- unpublished you're Are an you unpublished saying? independent game designer which is why you're watching this series so you're unpublished you're working at getting ready for kickstarter and you want to show off your game to make your list of people who want to kickstart you day one so you can get that number up and be ready to fund all right we're with you so here's the problem you have no money <laughs> and you look at the price for Board Game Geek or Packs Unplugged or Shucks, and they're charging you thousands of dollars for a booth space, and you don't have thousands of dollars because you haven't published a game yet. And you have no product, you just have your demo. Why would you spend money to do that when you're not even ready to go to Kickstarter yet? You're just getting names on your list. So, like, that's where smaller conventions are going to get you that fan base so that when you go to the bigger conventions, there's more buzz and what, you know, don't feel like you have to go to the cream of the crop, the biggest, craziest convention you can afford because that's not a good use of your money immediately. So that's kind of what we did. We would go to small local conventions, kind of scope them out see if they were worth our time and money to try and demo or promote our games and are slowly working our way up as we learn more about the different conventions and kind of what fits our personal vibe. So that's kind of where we're coming from, just so you have some backstory on how we're talking about these conventions. We went to PAX Unplugged, we're like ready to show off our game and they're like, you can't come in this room. You needed to sign up for this <laughs> seven months ago. And we're like, okay, my bad. I didn't use that as an example. <laughs> 
I did, because <laughs> that's exactly what happened to me. And it, you know. And then, even just signing up, so the, the question sometimes is, like, just literally, I mean, I have been on websites before, weeks, two weeks before the con, sat on the website and went, seriously, they have to have some sort of events. Yeah. I think it was PAX. And it turns out they had events, but it was in super secret. They didn't want anyone to know how to, where it is. And I'm just like, I just would like to know on a Friday night what, what I what, might. What we need what to might plan be, for. What might be fun to do. Right. What to do Friday night. We're planners, so we like to know, kind oh, of I schedule swear. ourselves. Plan it out. See what I'm going to, yeah. you know. If we, if we know that we're going to have a late night one night, do we need to buy some coffee to bring with us? Yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We'll talk about that later, but the answer is always yes. No, no, no. In the part where we get to the individual cons, we will talk about this. This <laughs> this will be a conversation topic. You will play games at board game conventions. I know you're surprised, but that's <laughs> shock. That's like a what major a major reason people go to board game conventions is to demo games that you might be interested in or to see what's new. So there's kind yeah. of two schools of thought in terms of board game conventions that I've seen. And feel free to correct me if you've seen other ones. Oh, I but will. there's the <laughs> there's the first look convention. Oh true. which is like your your Essen, your origins these are games that are just coming out. You can be the first one to get your hands on this new game. Oh my God, it's so great. And then you come home with it and you put it on your shelf and you never play it. But anyway, that's that's you. You do you, like it's fine, we're not judging. That's just a lot of what happens. So there's first look conventions where you get to see new games that are coming onto the market and you can get them before other people do. And there's, the second group, which is, we'll call it like the play category, which is like you're going there to see games that are on the market already and to determine whether or not you want to buy that game. Or maybe just play it and see if that's sort of your style. Check out this new company, network. The one nice thing about the play ones is two nice things. Uh, is number one they'll just bring a whole library they'll just be like yeah. we brought every game we could find uh, here's all the games that here's we had in the back store room this is every game from our warehouse and, it, they'll, and they'll have the games that you're just like why would anyone want to play Candyland and <laughs> it's true that they have tournaments in it they'll have tournaments but the other thing is um, th that but they'll also have games that you'll have never heard of. They'll have games that you wanted to play once, but you really didn't want to buy it because you're just like, I don't want to pay $80 for this game. But I want to at least try it. I just wanted to play the game. I, I don't necessarily want to own it. It's $80. I mean, they just bring everything. They'll just be like, we don't know. We just brought it all. We just brought yeah. everything. And oh. <laughs> we just brought it all. The other thing that they, they we quickly learned that you could do is some of the cons, well, for my purposes, the better cons. Um, Sorry, other cons. <laughs> it's have play to win. Yeah. A lot of conventions that are in that play category have a, a sponsor or a partnership with a company that will give them stock to give away specifically just for that convention. So if you like, let's say, uh, and this is this is one way they do it. I've seen it done other ways too. Is like, let's say, Wayne here played Fire in the Library at a con based off of a true story. Who is? Yes. Oh. I played Fire in a, in the Library at Stumptown Games, which we will talk about later. But it was really fun. And then all of a sudden they're just like, and you won the game, and she was just like, oh, I can take it home. Because <laughs> all of us played it one time before we had to go and demo our game at the demo table. And it was, it as, was a nice thing. It was, yeah. just, it, was, it was nice. I mean, it wasn't like you played it the whole day in this huh. hope you'd be like, I want to put 
50 chances in of winning Flyer in the Library. Great. And then she ran and got the... I got Tony got to sign it for me. And we're friends now. So that was a great... <laughs> that was it. That was a great experience. Actually, shout out to Tony for uh, asking me if I actually wanted him to sign it because it would lower the value of the game. <laughs> Appreciate you. There was actually some games we played in the Play to Win room that when they asked us if we played it for the raffle, we, <laughs> we said, said no. <laughs> <laughs> Do not want. Again, we won't name names. But what Carrie was talking about with, we'll just bring all the games, is normally they have like a, what they call a play library, which is normally multiple people's collections of games that they have in their home or that the company that's running the convention owns and they'll just literally put all of those games onto a truck and bring I think it with sometimes them. Sometimes even partner with like sometimes partner with libraries or board game whatever communities yeah. in the area or whatever who have they know have a lot of the games. Yeah. So they'll just bring, they just bring everything. everything for us, definitely. And if you are a burgeoning game designer who is currently unpublished, go to play style conventions. Oh yeah. People definitely. want to see your game and play it versus people who are looking to buy the new hotness because your game can't be the new hotness. It is not published. So there's all, um, there is worth in that, but the price tag to enter a first look kind of convention is going to be a lot higher and you're gonna get a lot less eyes on your game. Unless you happen to live there. If you are lucky That's enough to true. live there, then do please attend. <laughs> Another problem for us is that a lot of the first look kind of conventions they're not are in kind of weird spots. Yeah, they're not near- they're Indiana, not, they're not near Ohio. That's not a coast. How do I let people see my game at the conventions? What can I expect as a game designer at a board game convention? Um, and here is where the homework begins. So much homework. Uh, we're sorry ahead of time because each convention is different. So we can't tell you like, do this. But there is normally some sort of unpublished group that conventions partner with to show off unpublished games, whether that's Unpub or Protospiel or one of the other ones, lots of choices. Um, I would say check out both the conventions website and those websites to see where they're at. For us, we just signed up for PAX Unplugged, which is why we'll be talking about that a lot in this specific video, I feel like. Um, they partner with Unpub. And so for us, we waited for Unpub to say, we're open, we're taking applications, and you pay a nominal fee of like $15 per time slot just to keep it fair so no one grabs a thousand time slots and to kind of keep accountability, obviously and you give them your information and they sign you up for a slot and they give you a table. And so you show up and you have your time and you have your table and it's easy, relatively speaking. Another thing you gotta be warned about is a lot of these cons in the, in the unpub rooms is that for every hour that you have a game, you have to play a game. Protospiel is very big And on And that. I don't mean one-to-one. -one. But I think that that's not only valid for making sure that people come in and demo other people's games, but also to let you see what's out there. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually really a worthwhile endeavor to see what other people are putting out there and to see what your peers are doing. Well, and then a lot of times you'll be demoing a game and you'll be watching the game next to you and you'll just be like, okay, now they got these really cool pieces out. Okay, okay. I, <laughs> What's going on? I, I did, you know, I totally, um, after I'm done with this, I'm going to play that. So it can be theme and have no graphics. Theme and can have, <laughs> but you got that killer and he's chasing all the girls oh around. That's, that's. Every freaking time. <laughs> I will be at that table. You, you've signed up to demo your game. Um, 
and you show up and you're you're we're doing the, those demos and that's great um i also want to put it out there that we have a tabletop game that we're getting ready to go to kickstarter with too and the rules for that are completely different at most conventions so be aware of that um i assume that like it would be pretty easy to sign up to run a tabletop game at PAX and they hide that information from you on a completely different website. And so just do your research, look into where those signups are and ask questions if you need to. People are generally really friendly and happy to answer questions if you know who to go to. And confession time. Uh oh. After last year, where we found out. No, sorry. Not last year. Not last year. Twenty nineteen. Four times. We found out how to sign up for the the proto room at PAX. I then went through their Twitter feed to find out how far in advance they the, open up the they signups. open up the signups. And so when we say you have to do research, this isn't just, hey, I called someone. This yeah. is, they don't make any of this <laughs> of easy. easy. Yeah. It's like, I actually had to sit through the whole Twitter feed looking for the, the thing where yeah. they, and knowing when they would possibly, you know, possibly sign it up. And, um, you know, you know, even if somebody says, oh, that's on this website. Well, you'll have to find it on this website. And then, of course, the next year, it isn't going to be in the same spot. It's going to be in another spot because it's a forum. And so every year they make a whole new forum, forum. thread. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So be, be vigilant yes. and start doing your research, I would say, six months ahead of time, which seems like really far. And sometimes you will be sitting around and waiting, but at least you're aware of what you're waiting for and you don't find it like we did we kind of only decided to go to PAX in like October November we weren't really sure we were kind of on the fence about it and so we ended up deciding and we we tried to sign up for it and it had been closed for like two months at that point and some people said oh we'll just go down there and see if they have any openings and mm, that was a mistake and some cons do have the ability. So in other words, some cons have a situation where you can pre-sign up and if you pre-sign up then they put your name on the website and you have openings for, you know, to, you know, sign up for that room, to sign up for your your for your, like a, your a special and you're in the book as in like if they print yeah. a book, your name's in the book with all the information. Um, but if you didn't take the time to do any of that, they still have a few, like, we'll call it overflow tables or whatever that you can sign up like the morning of. Yeah. And so so the, that's way more, I would say that's probably more common at the smaller conventions, but also the bigger conventions have big rooms, which poses its own problems. So in a smaller convention, you're going to have less people, less oh. eyes, but more people are gonna be wandering around trying to find something that suits their fancy. In a bigger convention, you're gonna be trying to get attention from people who have 10,000 things that they wanna look at. And that's just something to keep in mind. Like uh, early on in this process, we talked about having a hook and having that elevator pitch, like that better be real strong for you to get the attention of people who are looking at published games or yeah. things with a ton of marketing value and you're there with your unpublished like card stock and sleeved paper game being like hey guys want to play my game they're gonna be like no so <laughs> so just keep in mind that you have to compete with way more people at a bigger convention and that's not a bad thing um it's just something that you're gonna have to remember as you're trying to work up that crowd. Yeah. So here's here's a topic that I think is really prevalent right now and really worth discussing. We are going to conventions this year in December, which is soon. Um, when you're watching this, it's probably going to be mid-November. We have less than a month to prepare or about a month to prepare 
for these conventions coming up and what does that look like in terms of this post COVID or during COVID world and how do we not only keep ourselves safe, you have a family, so you need to be cognizant of that. Whatever you bring home with you is coming mm -hmm. back to your family, but also how we keep you, our players and our fans and our friends safe. And what does that look like in a, in this sort of planning stage of what we need to bring with us? It's hard. Yeah. Because it's like, it, it means you end up having to like, wipe down things and some of these some of these pieces and parts weren't meant to be to wiped, wiped down. down yeah that's true so um we and, talked about laminating things that are bigger and easy to to sort of make laminated obviously um we have some custom dice that currently just have like stickers on them so maybe putting some sort of sealant on that so that we can like sanitize, wipe it down, but also things like bringing hand sanitizer. So if people come and sit down at your table, make sure that they get a squirt of hand sanitizer, make sure people are wearing their mask at your table. We don't really know what that's gonna look like. I know for me, um, I really only feel safe in crowds now if I have a mask on. So, um, I'll be wearing mine the whole time inside unless we're in like a very small situation with just like you and me and maybe some yeah. other people that we we really know and trust to be safe. But, you know, if if you have any suggestions, if you have things that you have thought about for conventions and safety in terms of that, please let us know. We're, we're actually super interested in that. We'll bring lots of Clorox wipes and hand sanitizer and clean masks for every day and like all that good stuff. But if there's something that you've thought of um, to help with that new stressor, let us know um, in the comments or in an email or whatever. We're, we're super interested. Yeah. Be... It's gonna be a different world. Definitely. Yeah, back, I... back going to like PAX and uh ECC and stuff the the game like just those spaces were so crowded and thinking about that now like even at the time I didn't like big crowds but now it's like very anxiety provoking it's a weird space it's also a weird space in the fact that um a lot of restaurants and things are having trouble being open right now but meanwhile you're in a convention and I'm going to be a little... You can't go home to make food. You can't go home to make food. <laughs> and um, in some of these convention halls, even pre-COVID, you had a hard time finding food and find, find, finding and eating. Yeah. Now, post-COVID... Impossible. That impossible. That restaurant probably isn't even open. I just wanted to say that a lot of times, the small cons and the big cons, interesting enough, uh, a lot of it, especially in the board game cons, is you end up networking with other people, but it's also because they also all go to the same cons. Yeah. As in like, you're gonna walk up to somebody and we sit in a game playing with them. Hey, we're playing this game together and we're having so much fun and we just talk. And then six months later, you're gonna go to another con, it's the same person. Yeah. And so one of the important things is you gotta kind of eventually just like learn the people, meet them, uh, interact with them, become friends with them on Twitter. Um, or Facebook or what, you know, whatever, whatever, on, whatever you're on. And, um, the reason why is because it's building the community, yes. building up this community of different like-minded people who play different games. And a lot of the people who you're going to interact with a lot. And when you're sitting at these tables and stuff are going to be people whose job it is, or I don't say job, this is not, they're not getting paid. Um, but who are, <laughs> they might be getting paid. Who are just, we're not getting paid who are doing it to also build a community. They'll go to all the different cons and they make tables and are inclusive uh, to try to get more people into board games and get more people feeling okay about, you know, and being inclusive. And so it's, in, it's you know, it's a good thing since you're gonna see all the same people over and over and over again, all these different cons, you know, name them, you know, talk to them, learn their names. What are they into? Well, you know, are they into the same kinds of games you're into? 
there's a lot of value in those connections, both like going to an unpub room and meeting other people who are showing off their unpublished game. You'll just meet a ton of people who are in the same sort of stage as you, people who are ahead of you and have a published game, but are here with their new game. Um, and we've made a ton of friends just by talking to people and showing genuine interest in yeah. what then, what products they're putting and out. And then you see them at every con. <laughs> because the community is so small, you'll see the same people over and over again. And so we were at one con once, and I don't remember who it was, but the the big people at the cons said the same thing. As in, like, so it even, like, so us at the little cons, we see all the same people at the little cons. Mm -hmm. But the people who go to the big cons, they say the same thing too. Yeah. As in like, I was in a panel last week with so-and-so and next month I'm gonna be in a different panel with this other person, you know, <laughs> and we're gonna be in the panel again together, you know, three months from now. And it's because it's the same deal. It's just a community. It's not, you know, it's not as big as, you know, it's not a big community, which means. Right. Cause you have Calico now, you're BFFs with the guy who <laughs> Made Calico. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it, and that was like such a weird thing too. Just uh, we'll we'll do one one more funny story to finish it off. But Carrie and I signed up for um, there was this there's a group that's like an unpub group that's in our local geographical area game lab that had an event where they were promoting local game designers at a children's museum. And so they asked if we wanted to show off and do like a quick demo of our game at this children's museum for this big event. We're like, yeah, sure, that sounds like fun. So we go up, we get our table all set up and Kevin, uh, Carrie's, fr Carrie's best friend, um, was, <laughs> was showing off Calico at the table right next to us. And so Carrie ended up chatting him up as I was demoing the game. It's a pretty game. game. And she was asking him questions about it. And I think you ended up demoing it at one point when oh, there yeah, was some downtime. Wanted, yeah, there was downtime and I just wanted to know how it played. Yeah. And so uh, now whenever we see Kevin at a convention, she goes over and chats with him and was kickstarted his game and it, well, you know it's just a it's a fun story that like we met at this weird he's with flat out games yeah and we keep running into flat, flat out, out games, games at all the conventions things. yeah and so it's just like it not some of the things aren't even like convention conventions no one is like this one of the things we saw them at was this little like educational panel slash game award thing. But yeah, like you'll just see them in these random places and be like, oh, hey guys. Because at this point we've seen them <laughs> at so many cons, we just recognize them. Yeah. We'll just be like, oh, oh they're you're, here. You're here, hey. Yeah, so, and that's that's really, I, I would say that's like one of the nicest things is to see people that you recognize, have a rapport with, and see what they're up to, see what they're working on, and then they're equally interested in seeing what you're up to and what you're working on. Yeah, yeah it's nice to be able to just, um, especially because you don't feel stupid. Okay, so here's <laughs> the thing. So you'll be in a situation where you're kind of shy at a con, and what? And Us you don't be shy introverts. You don't necessarily want to just walk up to random tables and be like. Hey, I like your game. Can I play that? And but on the same token, once you've seen somebody in a con two or three times, you you're totally comfortable. Being like, hey, I love this game. Hey, can is there a time that you can show me how to play it? And because you've talked to them before at a previous con, and yeah. so you have that, and they recognize you, and they'll be like, oh, hey, it's you. Sure, I can show you how to play this game yeah. or whatever. And so consequently, it's build it's. Having that network of people that you can feel comfortable with. Yeah. And so you you wanted to talk about networking in the grand scheme. I think for me, the biggest 
the one biggest rule about how to build your network is to be genuine, which is like such a flimsy thing. But like, if you're only in it to make people interested in your game, people sense that. And like, they're not going to be interested if they know that you're only in it to get your game seen. And but also, why are you there if you're only in it to get your game seen? And here is the other thing. The board game community isn't that big. Right. Like like we said, you'll see the same people over and over again. And they all talk. Yeah. And so consequently, once once that's known, it, it will... Percolate through the it system. It percolates through the system. Yeah. Especially if someone um, gets will say out of hand with it. Sure. It's the out of hand. I mean, if it's just like one, you know, someone has a bad day. Sure. Not, I'm not talking about we've, that. We've all had a bad day. We're not about, but when it gets out of hand. When you steal someone's design or yeah, do this oh yeah, really that, underhanded thing to that, someone. That will, that, will, that will go completely through the community yeah. and everyone will know about it. So that was a really quick discussion. Part one about conventions. Part two, we're going to talk about individual conventions that we've been to, what the vibe is like, what you can kind of expect, any things of note that we've noticed. Um, and we really would love for you guys to talk about what conventions you've been to, what you've liked, or what you've noticed in general below in the comments so that we can like take a look at that and sort of see maybe if there's things we want to branch out into. Yeah. Maybe in a year or two. <laughs> that, that's one thing that we're curious about is that, you know, is there a conventions that we're not going to that... We should be. We should be going to. Yeah. Is there conventions that, you know, like, it, it, there, there's even conventions that are nearby that we're not currently going to. So, I'm not even saying across the country. I <laughs> mean, <laughs> you know, yeah. so... Let us know. Uh, and as always, like, subscribe, turn on notifications. And share. All that good stuff. Share with your friends. Um, and if you haven't already, check out our second channel. We talk about uh, things that aren't board game related, but also lots of other fun stuff too. I try to do as much antics as possible. This is, you always try to do as many <laughs> antics as possible. Pizza now.